Good morning. It's Monday, November 30th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Angels' Bowls of God's Wrath, and our scripture is Revelation chapter 15. Then I saw in heaven another marvelous event of great significance. Seven angels were holding the seven last plagues, which would bring God's wrath to completion. I saw before me what seemed to be a glass sea mixed with fire, and on it stood all the people who had been victorious over the beast and his statue and the number representing his name. They were all holding harps that God had given them, and they were singing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your works, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous deeds have been revealed. Then I looked and saw that the temple in heaven, God's tabernacle, was thrown wide open. The seven angels who were holding the seven plagues came out of the temple. They were clothed in spotless white linen with gold sashes across their chests. Then one of the four living beasts handed each of the seven angels a gold bowl filled with the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. The temple was filled with smoke from God's glory and power. No one could enter the temple until the seven angels had completed pouring out the seven plagues. Occasionally, we get a glimpse of God's wrath poured out on humanity, and it scares us, or should. Reading those last few sentences about nobody being able to enter the temple because of the plagues and the smoke of God's glory gave me a bit of chilling down my spine. I couldn't resist comparing the way our 2020 coronavirus plague locked us out of the church for several months. People from every generation have offered interpretation of the Revelation visions, and some of those seem to make a lot of sense. There are two principles which I have come to understand governing any thoughts about the end times of Apostle John's visions. Number one, Revelation is an apocalyptic vision. Some of it is literal, some metaphorical. Deciding which is which is tricky stuff and should be approached with respect. You're on holy ground here. And number two, Revelation is literally an unveiling. And the full title is The Revelation of Jesus Christ. So, ultimately, everything in the book points to him. Among the synonym meanings for the word apocalypse are disaster, catastrophe, destruction, day of reckoning, judgment day, and end of the world. This certainly accounts for the scary part of the bowls of God's wrath. No sane person enjoys contemplating being destroyed. On the other hand, we see that there is a direct correlation of humanity's behavior and the response of the Creator. We eventually get what we deserve. What we sow, God brings to fruition. When we sow discord, we reap disaster. When we sow harmony, we reap beauty. When we sow hatred and war, we reap death. These are as certain as the up and down of children riding the playground seesaw. I would not venture to say in any conclusive or dogmatic way just what is in those bowls of God's wrath the angels hold. However, it is safe to say that the wrath adheres to principle number two. Everything in the book reveals or unveils Jesus Christ. If Judgment Day is filled with God's conclusive behavior, it's also unveiling God's righteous nature seen in the character of Jesus Christ. And that includes mercy and grace. Um, mercy and grace in wrath bowls? Did we hear that right? Well, I did say understanding John's visions is tricky stuff. Mystery is still mysterious. For you today. So, what do we draw from this day's problematic stuff? 
Well, the only stable ground I can offer you with such a task is to do exactly what those wrath-bearing angels did. Praise God. Hear them again in verses 3 and 4. Great and marvelous are your works, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous deeds have been revealed. This is trusting God and honoring to the purpose of all humans to worship and enjoy God eternally. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.